Hey folks, Mal the Train Tutor back in the studio and back with another realistic rock series video for you. Yes, we're back in the Hills, Cliffs and Rocks playlist and we're working on our realistic rocks. And this is another painting technique, but a little bit of modeling as well because we are tackling one of my favorites, volcanic rock. Now in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to get your colors right, how to create your lava effects and how to paint them up. And that can be quite challenging. Even I struggled with this one, but it turned out beautiful. Before we jump into the technique, guys, remember if you are subscribed, unless you ring that bell and get notifications, you've only actually got a 16% chance or a one in eight chance of actually seeing my videos in your feed. So ring that bell. And if you are gonna give this technique a go, remember there's a link down below to the Terraniacs group. It's 19,000 strong now, so jump in the group on Facebook and post your stuff on there or post it on normal social media and tag me in it at The Terrain Tutor on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. And finally, if you really like the vids, remember there's links to patrons and PayPal down below. It all helps keep the lights on, the cameras rolling, and me bringing these techniques for you. So, shall we jump into it? Come on. We're gonna be using this Woodland Scenics mold to cast up the rock face we're gonna be painting. First job is to level it off, and for that, I'm using a damp rag just to keep it relatively level. Next up, it's time to mix our casting powder, and for that, I'm using Cristocal R. This is a casting powder used for making industrial molds. It's incredibly strong, and it's mixed two parts powder to one part water. Once it's poured into the molds and, and slightly leveled off, I give the table a good bang to loosen out any air bubbles. Now, you can use a vibration table and you can pre-soak the molds in wet water, which is water with dish detergent to stop the bubbles, but I just find this way quicker. After about 10 minutes, it's ready to demold and it's strong enough to come out as a single piece with no worries. Next job is to clean it up a little, removing any of the little flash bits from where it's overspilled the mold lines. And then finally, picking out any air bubbles I didn't manage to bang out of it. And there you have it, the perfect rock mold for us to crack on with painting. So come on, let's get cracked on. So we've got our standard cast of our rock face, and this is the one that we've been painting up for each of the techniques. Now, much like with the sandstone one where I had to change it a little, because we're doing lava, I need to add a little bit on. We need some lava. Okay, now it should be said that volcanic rock isn't as sort of granity or angular as this. It's far more porous and bitty and has holes, but I can still show you the color techniques on this and we can add some lava with some hot glue. Now, I've got a couple of options for the lava. Yeah, we've got this nice channel down here, which lava would perhaps flow down. And we've got this nice crevice here. So that's where I'm gonna be adding my lava. And all I'm gonna be doing, it's coming along with some hot glue, nice and hot, yeah. And just feeding it in. Yeah. Letting it run down and letting it, it decide that where it's going. Adding the heat in, pushing it in, we'll just keep it nice and flowing. Yeah, and just let that flow down. Now what I want to do is let that flow down completely, then come back once it's cooled, add a few more bits onto it to build up the lava flow. Yeah, because when you look at lava flows, they're often, unless they're super heated and they're flowing like, like a liquid almost. Yeah, they're often like layers of lava on top where the bottom one has cooled a little bit, the top one runs over it. Sometimes you can have superheating inside them, which means they burst out from underneath. You can tell I've been watching a lot of lava documentaries. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we'll put some more here. Now this is warmed up nice and good. Just use that to pump that heat in and we'll make that the source. Yeah, that's it. Fill it in and just let that run down where it wants to run down. So I've just got to hold this. Once this is dried, I'm just gonna come in. I'm gonna do a couple more layers and I'll bring it back once it's done, guys. So that's our hot glue all dried. And I've tried to get a couple of layers on there. I've got a couple. It was a little bit too hot, so they've softened in, but it's good enough for me to show you what I want to show you. So there's our gloopy lava coming down. Right, next off to tackle the actual color of volcanic rock. Now, when you're doing volcanic rock, okay, a lot of people just do it as black and grays, and that isn't particularly right. You see, volcanic rock has a color shift to it. Okay, it has a particular, what you call it, color to it. Now this can either be 
purple or green. Okay, what happens is uh, when, when volcanic rock has been formed, the minerals inside are superheated and they form little crystals. Yeah, and the one that we're most used to is purple purple crystals because we're used to obsidian having a sort of blacky purple tint to it you know volcanic glass being slightly purplish you minecraft players will know that okay on top of that it can also be green yeah uh green crystals can also form so you can get green volcanic glass and if you want to see some cool stuff go and google green volcanic glass it's amazing now i'm going with the purple one and in true form i came in here yeah i went to grab my purple paint and realized willows nailed it all for her elves so i've got no purple paint so i'm gonna have to mix them up now mixing purple is just simply mixing equal parts of red and blue i've gone heavier here with the blue yeah i've gone with a crimson red and a cobalt blue yeah i've gone heavier with the blue because i want a really deep dark rich purple yeah and so what i've got to do is mixing all these in and i'm being excessive with the amount of acrylic i'm using here okay and the reason for that is quite simple yeah i want a, a decent enough shot on the camera to show you that may be a little bit too much blue actually let's throw a little bit more red in there yeah just a little Let's get that up to the purple I want it. There we are. Come on, bring it together. And what I'm going to do is just keep mixing this till I get a nice rich purple. So my purple's mixed up and I was debating whether to go with a black and a white to mix the grey, but let's just go with our standard house grey now that we've got our purple. So I'm going to mix and put some of that down. Yeah, it probably does need to be a little darker to be truthful. So we're going to put a touch of black in. Volcanic uh, rocks are very, very dark. A lot darker than granite and that sort of stuff. So we'll darken that up if he doesn't get it all over his hands. Like a mucky pup. Yeah, so clean that off. Let's give that a bit of a stir. Let's darken that down a bit. I think maybe a little bit more bosicle. I'm gonna darken this down and back when I've got it done. And there we go, that's our base. So you can see our original gray, which was already quite dark, and then we've got our base there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some of this purple and I'm gonna throw it in. Yeah, and that's just gonna tint it a little. I may need to throw a little bit more in. Yeah, it really depends on how it looks. A bit more, I think. Yeah, put a good blob in. This is where I go over. No, I think, yeah, there we are. That's it. I can see it now. So we've got a little bit of a purple tinge to that. Okay, and all we're gonna do now is, yeah, big brush, little bit of water, take off the excess, yeah, and base coat it. We're going to avoid our volcanic bits, our lava. Okay, we're gonna come back to those in a minute. Yeah, but first off, let's give this a good base coat. Now our base coat is complete. Uh, I've got a quick damp rag and just wiped off any excess off my lava streams. And as you can see, you should be able to see a very, very slight purple tint to it, but it doesn't look gray and it doesn't look black. You can tell it's not quite on that sort of tonal path. Okay, if that's a tone at all. Now, coming on, okay, what we need to do is prep our lava streams. Now, our lava streams, yeah, we want these to be bright, okay? A lot of lava is actually, isn't really bright in the real world, but for wargaming, we like it bright, so let's cover that way. Now, for this, I'm going to cheat just because it's quicker. Yeah, I've got some uh, white airbrush primer here, and I'm just gonna use that. I'm gonna use the airbrush to get it on, just because it's a little bit quicker. Yeah, so. One of the benefits of doing it this way is that when I do go over, which I will, I've got my base coat at this stage, I can quickly come back and just touch it up and fix it up. So my next job, I need to use my airbrush, yeah, and just get some white on here. Remember, you can do it with a brush, but it's just gonna take longer, that's all. Right, crack on. So that's our piece all dry. As you can see, my lava is nice and white. Yeah, I've gone along with the base color and I've just come into the edges and just trim them up where the airbrushing went over. If you're doing it with a brush, you won't have this problem. But we've got our purpley gray, yeah? 
in between and our white. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to bring up the rocks, okay, and highlight those up. So what we're going to do is, yeah, I want to lighten this up a little. So I'm going to throw some of my original grey back in. You don't want lava to be particularly too light, okay? So I'm just going to go with that. And all I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to give it very, very, what you call it, sort of rough over brush. Yeah, so I'm using a dry brush. Yeah, I'm taking the excess off on a bit of cardboard. And all I'm going to do is just to break up these large areas, I'm just going to come in and just brush it over. Yeah, it is a bit iggledy-piggledy. You won't see much difference. Yeah, but you will when it dries. So we're going to do this. And then all I'm going to do is, once I've got this and this is dry, I'm going to come in with a smaller brush. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit more and just dry brush up those edges. I'm trying to avoid my lava as best as I can. This brush probably is a bit too big for this job, to be truthful, basically. But, yeah, just getting it in all the raised areas. I just want a colour shift. It won't be much, yeah, but it will exist. Yeah, there we go. Now, the benefit of doing it like this is it dries almost immediately, which means we can then lighten it up just a little bit more. Yeah, he says a little bit more. I want to put just a little bit more of that purple in. Just maintain that sort of tinge to it. That tint. I'm going to end up getting carried away here. No, that'll be enough. You do tend to get the purple sort of look near the extremities and stuff like that. I think it's the way the crystals are formed. Right, so we've got our final highlight. Yeah, we take that. Yeah, take off the excess as usual. Yeah. Right, I've managed to mix myself up a bit of a mid-tone there. I did a little bit white just so we can get the contrast. This is good for realistic lava, to be truthful. But I don't think it'll show up that well on camera. So let's take it up to a wargaming highlight and give it a bit more of a contrast. Now, once again, I've got that purple running through. Yeah, to give the rocks a purple tinge. This is better. There you are. You should be able to see that better now. Down here as well. We might even come in and just give it a top highlight as well. Let's just work with what we've got first. Overbrushing, mixture of overbrushing and dry brushing on this one. Right, I'm just going to carry on with this and get these colours bang on. And then I'll bring it back. More than likely, all I'm going to do is just take a little bit lighter. Just go a little bit lighter on a few places just to give it a bit more definition. But I don't want it too light. And there you are. All done. A couple of little spots that I've just got to dry, but you should be able to see the texture on it now. You should be able to see that slight purple tint to it. And my, it looks beautiful. It's bang on, to be truthful. Bang on for really light, should I say. Yeah. Volcanic rock can be just almost pure dark with no highlights, but... I'm quite happy with that. Right, I want to leave this to dry completely so we can come back and then we can tackle, yeah, our lava bits. Right, back in a sec, guys. So with our rocks all dry, yeah, and looking beautiful, it's time to start on the lava. Now, uh, we're going to be using a mixture of blending techniques with this. We're going to start with a, a mid. Yeah, we're going to blend in the edges darker and then we're going to highlight the peaks. And for our base colour, yeah, we are going with Army Painter Lava Orange. Yeah, it's a nice ready orange. Yeah, it's not too orangey orange, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but it's a good base. So I've got some. And first thing I've got to do is basically give this white a really good base coat and just keep going over it till it's solid. Yeah, so just crack on. Now 
And with our base coat pretty much dry, you can see what a contrast that is. And I've got to give army painter, yeah, that is a beautiful orange for lava. Right, moving on, yeah, we've got our base color down for our lava. Now what we need to do is we need to get some shade and some highlights in it. And we're gonna tackle the shade first. Now for the shade, I've gone for dragon red, which is a really nice, dark, deep red. I'm just gonna water it down a little on the palette. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come along and I'm brushing it into the edges. Yeah, and it's gonna be messy and it's not gonna quite go, and I'm gonna get some water. I'm gonna flood it down a bit, spread it out a bit. Yeah, I may have to suck some off there. I think I've gone a bit excessive with the water. Yeah, but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this red and I'm gonna get it into all these recesses around the edges. I'm also gonna get it into this crease here. Yeah, just like that. I'm not really worried too much about being precise or anything like that, because I can watch call it. I can come along afterwards, yeah, and clean it all up. But what I want to do is get it into these creases, yeah, in between my lava flows to give a bit of definition to them, and at the edges of the rocks. I may have gone a little bit too heavy on those rocks. Yeah, we'll see. On the plus side, I can always just dry brush over them. Maybe a little. We'll see. I think I'm going to use a bit of water to thin that down a little. Right, so I'll thin this down. I'll bring it back once I've thinned it down. So Mel, being a messy pup, there he is. There you go. I've managed to pull this back quite a bit and clean it off with a little bit of water. Yeah, I think I've highlighted a little bit of the light there, but they'll disappear in the next stages. And on this side, I've been a lot more cleaner. <laughs> Yeah, uh, watch as you can see, I've aimed for wherever the lava meets the rocks and any creases. Now, it's a bit haphazard, so what we need to do is we need to blend it in. So I'm just getting my orange. Yeah, and I'm just gonna lay this orange down if it's thick enough, come on. Yeah, I'm just gonna lay this orange down over it. Yeah, just the large globule bits. Yeah, just to blend those edges in. I may have to do this a couple of times because this orange is a little bit weak. I need to thicken it up a little. Yeah, but all I'm doing is blending edges in. Yeah, just so they flow smoother. Tell you what, let's throw a little bit of red into there. Thicken it up with that and do it as a mid-tone. There we go. Yeah, so all I'm doing, just along the edge, a little bit of the sides as well. Get a little bit of colour onto there. Yeah. And I'm just breaking up those harsh lines, the transition lines between the two colours. There we go. Now, moving on, while this is still wet, yeah, it's time to add a little bit of light to it. And for that, we need a really nice yellow. So, I've gone for... This demonic yellow. Yeah, there'll be a little bit of excess fluid in there. Yeah, I'm gonna put that on there. Yeah. The greeny, let's see how it mixes up. That's all right. So mixing that up into a brighter orange now. Yeah. And then once again, we're going to come along. We're just going to layer this in. Just blend it in. Little strikes. Don't worry, we'll keep blending. You can let it dry in between these. Where I'm aiming for is wherever the, it's bulbous. And it looks like it would be hotter. Yeah, just keep blending them in. A bit on it will just slowly brighten things up. There we are. A bit more. Yeah, I'll put them on there, down there, yeah, there we are, we're starting to get inflections of colour, inflections of colour, right, now this is getting quite thick, which means blending it up even higher is going to be maybe challenging, do I dry it or do I let it blend it up high, even higher? Mm. Right, first off, let's get a bit of this off. 
Yeah, get it on my cardboard. Just get a little bit of that colour on the sides as well. Just break that up a little bit. I'll come back if they need to. Yeah. Right, next job. I think I'm going to keep just keep lightening this on the go. So, let's get some white. Since it's wet, we might as well mix it wet. <laughs> come on, you thick acrylic. Yeah, and then what we're going to do is a little bit of white in there, really start to lighten it up. Load of white in there, actually. Maybe a bit too much. Yeah. And then very carefully, because this is going to be overpowering. Yeah. Introduce a few. And everyone's like, whoa, whoa, what have you done? It's all right. It's all right. I know what I'm doing. That's what I tell myself. Right, clean the brush off. Yeah, let's blend these in. Oh, has that gone a bit too flat? I don't know. No, no, we should be all right. When you mix white in, it can go chalky. Yeah, if it's too overpowering. So we'll just have to be very careful on that. Yeah, knock that back a bit because we've got a bit too much red there. Yeah, I'm trying to keep the red in the shadows. And I think, yeah, I don't, I want this to dry before I add any more in, I think. Yeah, because we've got a good base for our, our extra yellow. Do we mix a bit more in? Mmm, No, I'm going to let this dry and then we'll do our final layering just to highlight it up. Okay, so we'll let this dry and we'll bring it back once it is. I wasn't quite sure when we were putting it on because of the matteness and, you know, how it, it's more lighter, but it has blended down all right, thank God. Right, next thing we need to do is we've done our shades and we're working on our highlights. We just need to highlight it up more. So I've got yellow. I'm going to put this in with the orange. Yeah, and get a really thick sort of nice orange. Yeah. And very carefully, yeah, we're going to use that to highlight things up. There you go, that's better. Ooh. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm not putting this all over. Once again, just going for the major blobby areas. Yeah, you're not going to get this in a single coat. You're painting over hot glue, which is really smooth. Yeah, and doesn't take paint well. Yeah, so don't even try to get solid colours. Just work on getting colour. Yeah, just a thin layer of colour. Let that dry and then simply come back and layer some more on. So over here, yeah. And what I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit on and I'm just building it up. Yeah, I want it down the centre of there. Don't worry if you get the odd little yellow fleck on. It'll just look like a bit of a flare. It works. There we are. And you can slowly see this building up now. A little bit more of that orangey yellow. A little bit more yellow into it. Brine it up a bit more. Yeah, this is the trick with lava. Lava isn't a single colour. You've got to sort of blend it up. Yeah. And it's, it's enjoyable, to be truthful. I like it. I like playing with the colours. Yeah. Uh, as we get it there, we're not far off to be truthful. I'm trying not to overdo it. Yeah, I am using quite a thick brush here, which is another factor. Next off, I want some white in there and I want to really lighten it up. Yeah, and perhaps I shouldn't be using this brush for this. Yeah, but just a little bit of touches. Yeah, we're going to blend these in in a second. I just want to get them down first. Yeah. These are the, the extreme highlights. Yeah, just on the, where, where we reckon it'd be hottest. Now, if we come along, clean the excess off our brush. Yeah, blend these in. Yeah, try and blend them into the center bosicle. May have to come in and touch a little bit more in there. Yeah. 
Now we'll come in and do a little bit more in the center in a second. Yeah, but we should start be getting that, that real look of lava. Now there's harsh contrasts on this. That's because it looks better as terrain. Yeah, I'm just going very quickly, just a little bit at the sides. Right, let's brighten this up a little bit more. Be very careful about this, Bose. Yeah. A couple of little spots. Nowhere near as many as before. Yeah, only on the highest sort of, the hottest bits. And we're just going to dab that in and just going to blend that. Take off the excess. Oh, take off the excess boats, not brush it on. And he reverts to his fingers in true style. Right, we need to sort that bit out, don't we? Because that, what's happening is as I'm layering it on, okay, because the layer hasn't set underneath it, it wants to watch call it, it's sort of reactivating that layer. So it is dealable. We just gotta let it dry and then build it up a little. But before I do, let's just smooth out some of these. Yeah, just a damp brush, just to break the, up those edges. There we go. Right, all I really need to do, I should do really lighten that a little, shouldn't I? Come on. Always a perfectionist. Oh, that was wrong. Right, gotta blend that in now. That was too light. There you go. I'll blend that in. Right, just need to dry that little bit off and line it up. A little bit, try a bit more white into the center. That was excessive. Now I've got to do it everywhere. What are you doing, Bosicle? Blend that round the edges. Oh, no, no, no. Do you know, it's, these are one of those things that you start and then at the end it all comes together. And you're like, yeah, that's really good. Put a bit of white now. Put a bit of passion over there. Yeah, and when you, I've got to dry this. I've just got to. All right, we're going to get nowhere with it. Right, let me clean that off because that's just gone over. There we go. Right, what I'm going to do is very quickly, I'm just going to dry that little bit so I can just get another layer of paint on and just fill it in a little. And almost done. I still feel like I've just got to touch that little bit up. And I just know I'm going to mess it all up. I just know I am, but I've still got to do it. It's awful. It's the curse of the Terraniac, but. Go away, Dot. See, this what this is what happens when, let me just get some some here. You just keep playing. Stop it, Bose. You've just got to get it painted and done. You're messing around with it. Right, let's just stick all that. There we go. Almost. I'm just going to touch that up in just a second and I'll bring it back. <laughs> I need to get this right. Right. I'm calling it quits. So that's good enough for me. Right, so. Bit of a struggle, yeah, because it is blending and that sort of stuff. It is tricky. It does take a little while to work out, but as you can see, yeah, you can get really vivid looking lava with it, okay? The trick is, first off, when you're doing your actual rock, make sure that you include that, what you call it, make sure you include that little bit of purple into your greys, yeah, to get that volcanic look. You can go green as well, okay? Uh, on top of that, with the lava, hot glue to create the lava, starting off with an orange base, washing red and blending it into the sides and the edges. Try and be a little bit cleaner like this side, not like that side. <laughs> yeah, and then after that, it's a simple matter of once your wash is set, yeah, start working in with your yellow, start working in with your whites to bring it up specifically where it'd be the hottest flowing. And then what you're left with is absolutely beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful. There we go. Right, guys, let's wrap this up. So that's it for this technique, guys. Remember, if you're after more rock techniques, you'll find them in the Hills, Rocks and Cliffs playlists on the screen right now. And if you really like the channel, then you can also subscribe or support it on Patreon for extra benefits. And in the meantime, guys, let me know in the comments what rocks you'd like me to cover in future videos, and I'll get cracked on with those, and I'll see you soon. All the best, yeah? Tara.